ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जयौ धीर ये शृण्वंता स्वकथा कृष्ण पुण्यश्रवण कीर्तन हृदय भद्राणी विदुनोती सुरुत्सता नष्ट प्राशु अभद्रेशु नि भागवत सेवया भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्टि आराध्यो भगवान व्रजेश तनयस्तधाम वृंदावन रम्या काचिदुपासना प्रजवधु वर्गे न तया कल्पिता श्रीमत भागवत पुराण यमल प्रेम पुमाथो महान श्री चैतन्य महाप्रभोर्मत नाग्रह पर ग्रंथराज श्रीमत भागवत की जय ओं जन्मादि यतरतस्वरा तेने ब्रह्म हृदयादि कवये मुह्यूरया तेजो वारी मृदा यथा विनीमय यसर्गो वृषा धामना स्वेन सदा निरस्तुहक सत्यम परम धीमह सत्यम परम धीमह सत्यम परम धीमह धर्म प्रोजित कैतव परमो निर्मत्सरा सता वेद्यम वास्तव शिवदम तापोत्र ऊनमूल श्रीमत भागवत महामुनिते किं वापरईश्वर सद्यो हृदय वरद्यते अतुबी शुश्रुभि तत्ण हरे कृष्ण टुडे संडे October 18, 2020, and we are continuing into our service to Granthraj Shri Mad Bhagavatam. Shri Mad Bhagavatam is to be served. Shri Mad Bhagavatam is Sri Krishna personified, non-different. He is Sri Krishna. So, and Bhagavat also means the personalities who are surrendered to Sri Krishna. so we have to serve them service can be done in vapu in person if we are fortunate enough to serve those great vaishnavas and to serve the supreme lord in person but also service can be rendered in vani vani means the instruction vani means the shastra and shri mad bhagavatam is the vani that glorifies shri krishna glorifies sri krishna's pastimes glorifies sri krishna's devotees glorifies the sweet pastimes of sri krishna along with his devotees so we will attempt with our hearts to serve sri mad bhagavatam so far if you all recollect this is our perhaps our uh, i think our fourth session on this verse of the of the of the of the chronolog- chronologically second verse but but from the technical perspective it is the first verse of shrimad bhagavatam the the 1.1.1 is the mangla charan which we had spoken about for five sessions and it is basically the commentary on the gayatri mantra and it is also the, the we had seen six darshans of the first verse now on the second verse we are describing what the shrimad bhagavatam is what is shri mad bhagavatam itself it basically rejects all kinds of different dharmas that one may, that are not absolute in nature that are relative or transient in nature all those dharmas or duties have been rejected as and they have been labeled as kaitava kaitava means cheating because it cheats us it brings us back again and again in this material world puna puna janam puna puna maranam janani chathare shayanam Sri Sankaracharya Pad has quoted that 
इन भज गोविंद भज गोविंद भज गोविंद भूड मते सम प्राप्ति सम हित काले नहीं रक्षति दूर करने सो प्लीज इवन द फॉलोअर्स ऑफ श्री शंकराचार्य पाद could not receive that message of shankaracharya path who is one of the greatest vaishnavas he is an incarnation of lord shiva and lord shiva is vaishnava naam yatha shambhu how could he not give this highest and the most sublime message is worship worship govinda govind means go means the cows go means the senses especially the senses of the devotees and krishna name krishna's pastimes krishna's paraphernalia krishna's um uh, all kinds of interactions etc they are actually giving pleasure to the devotees devotees the senses of the devotees go vind go means the senses and vind means pleasure go vind that's why one of the most apt names of the supreme personality of god it is go vind go vind is and that is why krishna has two kinds of names that is explained by our acharyas that the categories are in two in nature one is known as the gauniya naam and the other one is known as pramukh naam gauniya naam means means like names like when we address the supreme lord as hey ishwar hey parmatma hey parmeshwar etc when we address him but mukhya naam is govinda is gopinath is madan mohan is radha raman is damodar it is sham sundar ras bihari all those names etc they are known as keshava etc these names have some kind yashoda nandan 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 like this his names have a significant pastime significant transcendental quality it reminds us it reminds us when we say the name of of that particular pastime or that particular interaction with a particular devotee when we address krishna hey yashoda nandan hey radha madhav yashodanandana vrajajana ranjana ah when they when we address and when we sing like that krishna is attracted very quickly he says oh you name you know the name of my mother yashoda oh you're calling me yashodanandan you must be very dear to me you will become very dear to me you are addressing me by this name you're calling me nandanandan you're calling me radharaman oh you are you you, you are indeed and that attracts krishna more than when we call him vaikuntha adipati we call him narayana or we call him ishwara we call him parmeshwara uh, so those are names in opulence those are names with awe and reverence but these names known as the mukhya naam they bring you very intimate it brings us in the, that just by that simply attempt of reciting those names will make us qualified at one point to go into that inner circle of sri krishna and golokrinda so this is very very important please try to understand some of these philosophical concepts are very deep in nature and when we understand the concept behind it then we will understand so all the other tribes of the the religions or the duties that are kaitava because they bring us back again and again to this material world that is why it is known as kaitava whether it is piety or sinful activities even people who commit punya karma they have to come back they will maximum they will get is swarga they can even get brahma loka they can even get the other lokas of the saptarishis or they can get the different bhur bho swa janar mahar tapas satya all these different planetary systems that are considered heavenly in nature or the then they will get that but ultimately then once the time expires they have to come back again on this earthly plane hey rupe brahmand bhramite kono bhagyavan jeev guru krishna prasade pai bhakti lata beech in this way the jiva is simply oscillating sometimes due to the good association or pious association the jiva goes is promoted to the heavenly planets and when the time expires just like a nice vacation sometimes when we go to a nice vacation very luxurious resort we go but how many days can we stay there one week two weeks three weeks four weeks after that we have to return back and then we have to go back to the grind to the rat race go back to the office we have to work that 9 to 5 maybe drive two hours up and down so that grind is going to come back so like that we even the heavenly planets are still considered in the 25% of the material creation there also there are defects 
What are those defects? The four defects that Krishna has mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita. Janma, Mrityu, Jara and Vyadi. These four are even on this earth planet. They are in the heavenly planets and they are also in the hellish planets. But different degrees. But still, jail is jail. And we explained that that in the, by the example, certain white collar criminals, they get a particular cell in the jail that may be with a fan or with a telephone or with books and better kind of food arrangements, but still they are in a jail, right? So jail is jail. And that criminal who has committed murder and he has committed some heinous crimes is also put into the dark cells and isolation, but that is also jail. It is still jail. So this is known as Durga. Durga. Durga means a fort. And the Adhishtadi Devi is Durga Devi. That is why she is known as Durga. She is the one with the trident who, who keeps all the jivas who are hours from Krishna consciousness in this material world. It is said in the Brahma Samhita, there is a nice verse. Srishti Sthiti Pralaya Sadhana Shakti Reva Chayeva Yasya Bhavanani Vibharti Durga Icha Anurupam Api Chacheshtatesa Govinda Madi Purusham Tamaham Bajami. Lord Brahma glorifies Govinda in Golok Vrindavan and he says, Yes, this particular material world, uh, uh, the where the Devi, uh, where Durga Devi, who is the superintendent of the Durga or the fort, she follows your instructions. She follows your instructions. She is Vaishnav Devi. Uh, and a Vaishnava is whatever Krishna wants. Like Yamraj is a Vaishnava, he's a great Vaishnava. He's one of the 12 Mahajans. One may think that Yamraj is such a bad fellow. Uh, he is the one who, who, who brings terror to the Jiva, especially the sinful Jiva. When he leaves the body, he sends his Yamdutas, his, his, his messengers of death, to retrieve that Jiva and they catch him in a noose. And they are so ugly looking and so ferocious in nature. And they drag the Jiva from here all the way to Samyamanapuri, the capital of the uh, of uh, or, or Yamloka. The capital of the hellish planets is Samyamanapuri, just like the capital of the of the uh, of the uh, 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 capital of the heavenly planets, the, the third heavenly planet where Lord Indra is Amravati. So this information is given. Samyamanapuri, that is the head office of Yamraj. So Yamraj is the great Vaishnava. Actually, he is serving Sri Krishna. Somebody has to do just like some all the police officers who are, are uh, who are the law enforcement people, uh, the the bona fide ones. They are serving the government, although they are in the jail. They are guarding the the prisoners, but their services to the government to make sure that they don't escape. The reform happens to these prisoners. So Durga Devi is she is the superintendent of this material. And by the way, it is Navratri. So happy. Navratri to all of you. Please pray to Ma Durga that she is a Vaishnavi. Don't ask for material things. Most of the people in, in Navratri, they ask for material things. Even when they pray to her husband, Lord Shiva, uh, they ask for material things. Do not ask that. Ask something that they will, they will be very pleased to give. Ask the Krishna Bhakti. Ask them to remove our obstacles in Krishna Bhakti. Pray to Lord Ganesh. He is the Vigna Harta the son of Parvati and Shivji, ask him to remove all the obstacles. Huh? So like this, uh, you know, we can ask these, even these great demigods, the Devi Devtas, to remove the obstacles of, in, in our, our spiritual life. That is the proper understanding. And then Ma Durga will be very pleased, us, pleased with us to let us out of this fort of this material world the 25% of Krishna's creation where there is birth, death, old age and disease. And therefore, she will help us with all kinds of impediments that are there in order to obtain pure bhakti. Therefore, Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, not everybody is attracted to Srimad Bhagavatam. Maya Devi is so strong. Maya Devi is actually Durga Devi. Uh, she, is, she is the personified form. Durga Devi is Maya Devi. And her job is to keep us illusion. That is a service to Sri Krishna. Until and unless... Uh, there is uh, the, the, the uh, internal desire of the jiva to stop the suffering. And then Maya Devi or, or Durga Devi, after testing us enough, will make the facilitation. She will facilitate our, 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 uh, our understanding and she will bless us so that any impediments that may come our way, she will take away. So this is our understanding. 
but those who are shakters especially in bengal we see that that the, the durga puja etc is being performed wonderfully but without any transcendental purpose it's mainly for material they are all praying to ma durga for material things and that is that is not the proper uh, sentiment that vaishnavas uh, express you know vaishnavas respect everybody and wherever they go they ask for blessings that please help me in my krishna consciousness and that is the proper way one time shri prabhupad when he was in mayapur uh, in navadeep actually like during a walk he had so many disciples with him and there is the temple of uh, lord shiva and right next to it there is a temple of proud maya devi a, a durga devi's temple and prabhupad stopped there and he offered his pranams and some tears trickled down his cheeks so his disciples especially the westerners who were there they were thinking that prabhupad said in many many lectures that you know like even bhagavad gita krishna's messages that those who worship demigods will end up with demigods right those who worship the bhut pretas or the or the uh, spirits will end up in that planet and those who worship me will end up in my planet so then they were they were confused then they saw prabhupad folding with folded palms in front of durga devi so then prabhupad revealed that yes she is so powerful uh, she is allowing me to preach krishna consciousness without impediments so you know i am very grateful to her see this is the vaishnava perspective when we pray we should not some of us you know especially i have seen in our movement there are certain devotees who become very fanatical and they are they are committing offenses uh, one time in chicago many years ago when i used to uh, when i used to be uh, situated in in chicago for last 25 years when i was staying there and uh, associated with this con chicago temple um one grandmotherly figure was crying one day and uh, you know she kind of confided saying that you know my my um, um son who recently joined this con you know in and he uh, through all the uh, in in my temple i had ganesh ji shiv ji durga ji and he removed them from the temple and he he put them away and, and saying said that this is garbage and he threw them in the dustbin and she was so hurt she was so hurt with that attitude and he was started to preach like you know krishna is the supreme prasad we got it we should only worship krishna so this is not the proper understanding prabhupad never said that you should disrespect the other demigods he should real vaishnava doesn't respect disrespect anybody amane na mana dina kirtane asadari these vaishnavas on vaishnavas who are even the demigods who may be even the heavenly planets or they may be in control of so many things in this material world they have been designated a seva by shri krishna himself so we have to respect them we have to respect their service It, they are qualified enough you and i we are not qualified to even obtain a little service for krishna they are actually uh in the service of shri krishna in the in the uh, what do you call the 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 governmental agency of this material creation the different departments have been given to the different devi devatas or the demigods because they are qualified enough and if we insult them do you think krishna will be pleased no way impossible yes the only only thing is we should not consider them as as the supreme lord supreme lord is only krishna ekala ishwara krishna or shabritta chaitanya charita amrita ah only krishna is the supreme matta parana anya kinchit aschit dhanaje bhagavad gita there is nobody uh, equal to me asamaraddho there is nobody equal to me krishna is advaita chutam anadim ananta rupam he is advaita there is nobody equal to sri krishna so what the main problem in india is considering that all gods are equal ah uh, that is a big offense but that does not mean that we disrespect all the other jeevas if we even respect our so called uh, gurus who were at one time hippies and who were some more sometimes doing all the worst things and then later on due to the purificatory process uh, by the mercy of shila prabhupad they became initiating gurus and we worship them and then we disrespect lord shiva we disrespect lord Ma- mother uh, goddess durga ji we disrespect disrespect ganesh ji just because we have become a naya naya mulla it is said naya naya mulla jada hi karta hai allah allah ha 
so that is fanaticism and in fanaticism we end up committing a lot of offenses chaitanya mahaprabhu has warned it is called pagal hati aprat meaning in a garden or upavan in sanskrit upavan means a garden that has been created by human efforts and upavan like the great palaces and the kings in dwarka etc and they had upavans lot of beautifully cultivated gardens huge beautiful gardens with many many beautiful trees and shrubs and flowers and there were so many workers who worked the malis or the gardeners who 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 really had to sweat it out day and you know every day in the heat and water it and take care of it and it took years to cultivate beautiful upavans the beautiful gardens and then suddenly what happens it took maybe 15 20 years to cultivate a beautiful garden and somebody lets in through the gates of that garden a mad elephant and what happens within 5 minutes that elephant will go hither and thither into the garden and uproot trees and and crush the beautiful flower beds and will finish the entire garden and that's like our offenses are like that one may chant the holy name one may do many so many other things in the process of purification but at the same time when one commit offenses then everything is becoming in a very very precarious condition hari it is said that the one should not commit offenses hari sthane aparade tare hari naam toma sthane aparade nahi paritran narottam das thakur says in one of his bhajans that hari sthane in 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 when when one commits offense to hari to krishna or narayan or vishnu or anyone then that can be nullified by taking hari naam but toma sthane aparade when we commit an offense to vaishnava nahi paritran there is no recourse that vaishnava when he once offended then that vaishnava himself can forgive even shri krishna cannot forgive even shri krishna sudarshan chakra in many cases like in the case of amrish maharaj where where durvasa muni had committed great offense and the chakra of krishna could not tolerate it narayana sent his chakra to kill durvasa muni and durvasa muni went hither and thither went to lord brahma to lord, to to vishnu i mean sorry to 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 lord shiva and they could not even do anything and then he goes to vishnu and vishnu is a very stop your sudarshan it is your sudarshan please forgive me he says even my sudarshan now is out of my control but, uh, what is that verse so there is a nice verse aham bhakt paradhino ah i am dependent on my devotee now so you have to go back to my devotee ask for his forgiveness and when he went back to to uh, amrish maharaj and asked for forgiveness at that time the sudarshan chakra almost cutting his his neck was retrieved like that even with nityananda prabhu and jagai madhai nityananda prabhu was hit on a with a pot by two drunkards two ruffians known as jagai and madhai in nardip and he was oozing blood and all he all he said is please take the holy name ek bar hari naam lai lo ek bar hari he used to beg nityananda prabhu and haridas thakur was sent door to door by chaitanya mahaprabhu give hari naam give krishna prem so they used to knock on every door and when they went and when nityanand prabhu knocked on the door these ruffians who were drunk they said hey get out of here we don't want your hari naam and they were drinking liquor and they hit the pot on nityanand prabhu lord balram sakshat dauji was assaulted and he was bleeding profusely and then when that news went to chaitanya mahaprabhu mahaprabhu was so angered like none other his eyes became red and immediately he looked up into uh, towards vaikuntha and he says come on sudarshan come here cut they have, they have committed a great offense against dau and and as the sudarshan came down from vaikuntha nityanand prabhu immediately went and held mahaprabhu's legs mahaprabhu what are you doing you are a prema udhari avatar you are not supposed to carry any weapons in this avatar please forgive them i forgive them and when that when that happened and when god or what is the name when uh, uh, jagai madai fell at the feet when they saw that how the sudarshan chakra was coming towards them they fell at the feet of nityanand prabhu and they asked for forgiveness then the sudarshan chakra stopped so hari sthane aparade tare hari naam toma sthane aparade nari please be very careful ah uh, do not commit offenses try to understand what krishna consciousness is this is krishna's entire creation even the heaven and the hellish planets yamraj lives in the hellish planet are we going to offend yamraj no how dare we offend yamraj 
no not possible uh, so we have to be very very amanena manadena kirtanya sadari words of krishna in the mood of radha radha ji is the topmost devotee of shri krishna uh, and she is she is actually a uh, preaching in the sistastakam saying amanena manadena uh, giving respect to all so how dare we disrespect hmm? the enthusiastic devotees those who do not read prabhupada's books properly they are committing offenses uh, by simply it is like spiting the you know, spy, it, 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 one time there is another story it's important that i mentioned this since the topic came up i know that it may be slightly off a tangent in relation to this verse but it's an important shiksha that we all should follow very carefully uh, one time there was a king who had a pet monkey and that monkey and this is prabhupada has mentioned this story uh, that wherever the king went the, the the monkey went with him when the king sat for eating he also sat and the king was also serving him food uh, so like that where the king went for a walk in the garden the monkey followed him and the king the monkey followed him to the palace and even so much so that sometimes the monkey would sit on the king's lap while the king was seated on a throne so one time the monkey uh, saw that on the you know, there was a fly flying in the in in the palace that it was sitting on the king's nose so immediately the monkey said oh how dare you sit on my master's nose and he the, the he took the king's sword that was right on the on the on the on the uh, throne and he took the sword in an attempt to kill the the fly and he when he when he when he when he swished the sword uh, the fly flew away but it cut the king's nose the tip of the nose so he was he was thinking that i am doing a nice service to the king by removing that fly that was irritating the king but no we are not that's a big disservice he ended up cutting the nose so like that when we behave in such a way that is going to spite or cut the nose of our acharyas that that is not proper so my request to those who are attempting to be preachers first read prabhupada's books nicely hear from hear katha from proper vaishnavas then we will understand otherwise we are just going to be fanatical one should not preach out of ambition our preaching should be in the mood at least we should try our best with that desire that our preaching should be in the mode of compassion for the benefit of others ah uh, that is very important otherwise what will happen is we will simply inflame the flame of ego where we will gain name and fame we are looking and we we will want respect which will be diametrically opposite to chaitanya mahaprabhu's movement of amanena manadeva kirtanya sadari and then the subtle way that that it will come in into our our heads everybody should bow down to me everybody should give me respect and we have seen that in the last 30 35 years of our uh, of our presence you know in the movement we have seen it so many times devotees who have just in the beginning everybody comes in with a very very good attitude but later on durga devi she brings impediment she tests and one of the acharya said the more you get into krishna consciousness the more you will be tested and one of the acharya said that there is more maya in temples than outside of temples so this is an amazing realization that he spoke because once we get into this krishna consciousness and then we think oh i'm better than the rest of the world i'm better than this i'm better than that then we are finished we always have to take a very humble stance bhakti siddhant saraswati prabhupad said that when you are preaching you are preaching minimum two persons first to yourself and then to the other this is shila prabhupad's gurudev he is known as singha guru lion guru ah he is rupanuga viruddha pa siddhanta dwanta harine anything that was against the principles of chaitanya mahaprabhu in the line of rupa goswami he used to cut it to pieces that is the part of his pranam mantra rupanuga viruddha pa siddhanta dwanta harine the mayavadis used to be scared of him but he was so humble outside externally he appeared like a thunderbolt but inside he was very soft like butter any time anybody bowed down to him even his own disciples he used to say softly dasos me i am your servant a guru says to his disciples i am your servant this is the proper attitude then one is a real guru one is a real preacher all you do is always think about the benefit of others uh if we think that how i will benefit that means finish then that preaching is kaitava and shrimad bhagavatam doesn't allow that shrimad bhagavatam is not that therefore dharma projita kaitava atra shrimad bhagavatam people take 
advantage of Srimad Bhagavatam making millions of dollars, crores of rupees. They are professional speakers. They are cheating themselves and they are cheating the public. Even in our movement, there are people like that, not to take any names, but they choose which home they will go to. If they see that they are come visiting a particular city, they will try to find out through their, through, through their uh, networking that who is the richest person, the richest devotee, who lives in a million dollar mansion, who has got nice cars. And like that, they will pick and choose. Even sannyasis are like that. That is not Srimad Bhagavatam. I'm afraid to say, you know, this is not proper bhakti and that is what has been rejected. Dharma projita kaitavatra. And what I'm explaining right now, these are all external meanings. I've yet to dive into the rasic meaning of these words. But this is so important that if we are blessed further by, by becoming preachers in the future, if, if Krishna so desires, if Prabhupada so desires, then let us become Das Anudas, even if we have to preach, our, our, our only goal should be to please Srila Prabhupada and for the benefit of the persons who we are interacting when we are, when we are preaching, when we are trying to share Krishna consciousness. Actually speaking, when we are on the Vyas Asan, we have a very big responsibility. It is not something ordinary that, you know, just because of scholarship, we remember a few verses and we rattle them out and then, you know, we get the pat on the back by the persons listening and the wah 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 it is extremely dangerous for the speaker and most of them maya devi puts them in that trap so therefore Srimad bhagavatam is not that dharma projita kaitavatra it is explaining so many wonderful topics where how humble the devotees are in the different different prasangas in the bhagavatam as we go further atro in this parmo nirmat saranam satam and this is meant for those devotees who are nirmatsara, who are without any duplicity, who are without any, and who are clean in heart. That is a very, very important aspect. Srila Prabhupada mentions in his purports that, that these devotees who are, uh, it is mentioned that the, the, the different activities of, of dharma, artha, kam, and moksha, uh, the, 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 the nivrut dharma, that we explained many times in the past that people commit to dharma because they get cheated. They are getting cheated because they want what they do. They are committing to pious activities so that they can get artha. They can get more benefit. Um, if they are giving money in charity. Last time we remembered one song in the Hindi films in our childhood. That Garib ki tum sunoge, wo tumhari sunega. Tum ek paisa doge, wo das lakh dega. The meaning of this, this <coughs> particular lines in this song is that if the beggar is saying that that please be pious, do some punya activities, put do some pious activities. If you listen to this beggar who is very poor, if you give him one paisa, one paisa means one cent, one hundredth of a rupee, uh, eight paisa doge, wo das lakh dega. The Lord will give you ten lakhs. One Lord will give you ten thousand, uh, hundred thousand times, or sorry, more than her. He will give you one million times. He will multiply it, the multiplication factor. So people who are pious are motivated to donate because they get they, they see the results that by their pious activities that they have learned from their from their family members or from their from the elderly persons or their grandfatherly figures who are very pious they were very very rich and we have seen it with our own eyes we have heard it with our own ears we have experiences that pious people get more and more artha or money and then from that, when you get so much money, you get cheated. What is that cheating? That cheating is that your, your material desires, one after another, get fulfilled. Or at least the attempt to fulfill them. A small house, you go into a mediocre house. From mediocre, you want to go into a better house. From a little bicycle to scooter, scooter to motorcycle. From motorcycle to a, to a luxurious car. From one car to five cars. From one mansion to five mansions. There is no limit. The karma, the material desires keep on multiplying because of the greed that is there to lord it over material nature. So this is the nature of the material world. We are getting cheated. And that is why we commit to this dharma. Artha, kam, and then ultimately, even after having the finest of the finest material things, we are still not satisfied internally. And we gave examples of so many persons who in 
who are industrialists and top most uh, uh, public figures who have everything in their lives, materially speaking, but then they end up committing suicide. And I, I believe I have one example that I've given in the past. It was, this came as a personal shock to me when I heard a few years ago, the top, one of the most topmost uh, actors in Hollywood, a humorist, who is so famous and very, very, very amazing, uh, Robin Williams. You know, he, he was making the whole world laugh through his movies and he was so famous. He was, he, they found him in his closet, hanging or, or, or you know, with something, uh, with, a, with his uh, waist belt. And he committed suicide by hanging. He was so, so uh, uh, internally, uh, he must have been devastated. And somebody who is a successful actor in Hollywood, you can imagine how many, he's a multi-millionaire or perhaps a billionaire. Uh, Michael Jackson. We all know, everybody knows Michael Jackson. He had this Neverland ranch that was worth millions and millions of dollars. But he was internally, he was so, so rich. He was such a rich person. He had everything. He had estates and he had the name and the fame and everything that he can imagine. Well, ultimately he was taking drugs. Every day he used to take stronger and stronger drugs. And then ultimately he told his personal doctor, can you inject me? With this very powerful drug, I want to feel even more intoxicated. And some uh, anesthetic drug like, I think, propofol or something like that was injected illegally to him. And then he never woke up. This is the position. So dharma, artha, kama. These things are cheating. Cheating us again and again. And ultimately, then those who still are survived and they cannot fulfill their desires, they want to give up all these material things for moksha, for liberation, in pursuit of liberation. I'm tired, tells his wife, give everything to the kids, divide all the property, divide the industry, give everything and let us go to Haridwar, Rishikesh, or just simply go to some cottage in some nice, peaceful area in the nature and simply let us, you know, spend our time, we need peace, liberation. So it's all about me. I am doing dharma, I, so that I can get artha, I, I got artha so I can fulfill my desires, karma. And because all the karmas that I got, all my desires, although I'm not satisfied, so now I, I want liberation. So where is the question of bhakti? Where is the question of Krishna? Where is the question of any kind of any other higher personality except myself? It is motivated by materialistic attitudes. So like this, that is cheating. Dharma, Projita Kaitan, Srivad Bhagavatam doesn't uh, deal with such duties or such uh, facages or kitava or cheating religions. So we have to understand those devotees of the Lord who rise about such materialistic attitudes, uh, they do not compete with, with, with all these materialistic people. Those who are wise, they will say, no, 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 that's okay. I've got roti kapra makan, sufficient. I've got, Krishna has given me food on my table, a comfortable place to stay, but, you know, to keep my body and soul together. I do not need to compete and spend my time uh, trying to compete with all the other materialists. And we have this attitude, especially in our Indian community. We have seen it in our childhood, that if the neighbor bring, brings a TV, Color TV. At that time, they used to do black and white. So then we hear the thought that, hey, you know, he got a color TV. Can we get one? This is the talk in the family. Uh, he got a nice car. Can we get one? You see, the neighbor's wife got a new necklace. You know, I also need a new necklace. The wife nags the husband. And the neighbor has a nice, opulent wedding for their son or daughter. You know, we should also show off. You know, we should also invite. They invited 500 people. We should invite at least 1,000. And we should do this and do that. This is the attitude that is there in India. It is so horrible. If somebody, you know, does a wedding in a particular, now they did it in a destination wedding. Now, even in destination weddings, they choose exotic locations. Just to show off some of these industrialists, you know, they spend so many dollars and dollars and dollars, millions of dollars in just... In, in their in the in the weddings in terms of just the dresses and the the diamond necklaces and all 
even if by by human standards one doesn't feel guilty to spend that kind of money when so many people are dying of hunger forget bhakti i'm talking about simple pious activity how can one even sleep at night where in one night they can blow so much money this is this is this is criminal in nature it is criminal when one involves himself or herself in such heavy sense gratification where will they go ha huh? that is this is just just not done but but people are so infatuated they are competing prabhupada has mentioned in this purport of this particular verse that they are competing uh, between just like uh, with with other sense gratificatory just like animals and ma- man to man community community nation to nation but the devotees of the lord are parmo nirmat saranam sata they rise above such competitions very important so the prabhupad has mentioned in this purport that they rise above that ha ah, this is very important that is the same thing krishna is instructing arjuna nistray bhava guna arjuna please rise above the three modes of material nature oh arjun this is what he is he, uh, 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 krishna is, is is telling that the three modes of material nature of tamogun rajogun and of uh, what do you call uh, 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 satogun please rise about those he say rise about those because tamogun will take you to hell rajogun and tamogun will keep you in hell or it will bring you back and again it will, and satogun will take you to the heavenly planets rise about that so the those those devotees will rise about that and they will enter shuddha bhakti or pure devotion so such transcendentalists or this parmo nirmat saranam satam as mentioned satam means those devotees are nirmat saranam sabda means those devotees who are pure hearted ah uh, they are non envious and pure in heart and they are basically rising above such materialistic concepts this is very important uh, the socialist conception that everybody is equal and we should have a competent competition less society a society without competition ah uh, is artificial prabhupad mentions because uh, in the socialist state there is a competition for the post of a dictator like the socialist states of the previous ussr the leninist the marxist etc so there is they are not equal uh, they call comrade they address each other as comrade like the socialist parties in calcutta uh, like the calcutta or bengal is, is even today I, it is said that uh, it is uh, predominantly socialist or communist right so this is uh, you know they that is that is an artificial state that is wrong and so like this prabhupada is saying that there is the competition for the post of dictator but from the point of view of the vedas and from the point of view from the humanly activities sense sense gratification is the basis of material life so that is the one thing that we have to we have to try to go beyond our sense gratification and that is very important and there are these three paths that are mentioned in the vedas dharma artha and kama especially involves worshiping different demigods that is the reason if you see right now navratri is there the nine days of worshiping ma durga it is all sense gratification full of sense. navratri we have seen you know we are we are originally born in bombay and uh, we have seen how even in our, in our childhood you know this dandiya ras and this garba and all this that happened it is only for sense gratification even on the material platform on the platform of pleasing ma durga there is no pleasing ma durga it is just a facade it is just cheating it is it is nothing but a place for boys and girls to meet and you know show their display their sense gratificatory skills it is said unfortunately in, you know we have heard certain statistics that you know that the, the way the, the young kids the teenagers when they navratri comes how they demand um, expensive clothes from their parents and they go to the best of the the shops to buy those expensive clothes that are that, that are costing maybe 80 90 1000 lakh 2 lakh rupees you know for the navratri nine days nine different dresses you know this is the kind of money and then that is just to attract the opposite sex and it is said that there are so many of these girls and boys who indulge in illicit sex during this attraction of this navratri day the statistics are speaking and it is basically virudh 
dharma uh, there is no question at the end they do some aarti of durga devi but you know it is just more or less a formality but all these filmy songs that even in our childhood we have heard that even you know our mother and our motherly figures used to go for garba but it was purely on a on a pious platform to please ma durga all the garbas that they sang they were all eulogizing ma durga but today we have all these uh, what do you call the hollywood singers etc they they do this remixes uh, of the hollywood songs that are full of sense gratification and just simply the impetus is attraction to the opposite sex with all those kind of songs converting them due to the remixes and and implying that this is garba or this is ras uh, or or dandiya ras no 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 this is cheating so bhagavatam doesn't deal with all this that's what we are trying to trying to bring home here you know don't think that you know is navratri all this sense gratification especially we see that in bombay in gujarat it is of a very very high level and it is very shameful in nature once we enter into or once we get this information then we will see what kind of sense gratification is this you should see sometimes the boys and girls when they are playing this garba and all how their eyes roll around how lusty they are it is it is just you know very abominable in nature and this is what the society is promoting and this is what the society likes the girls and the boys the young girls and boys they come home at 2 am 3 am you know and all this this is not done in a proper vedic culture or in the sanatan dharma no unfortunately and this is this is what prabhupada is trying to say that basically a uh, worshiping of different demigods uh, for the promotion to the planets to the demigods or for for sense gratification uh, is not it, it, it's completely material uh, so the impersonal aspect of the absolute truth is also not the highest which we, he's Prabhupada is indicating the fourth one, which is moksha, and we will probably repeat this and understand this even more in the fifth chapter of this canto, when first and sixth chapters, when Naraji is having a conversation with Vyasdev, especially about this dharma, arth, and kama and moksha. So people who are thinking that liberation is the best, people are thinking that they are going to merge into some Brahman, into some lie, into some light. and they will give up the three modes of material nature and they will become transcendental aham uh, brahmasmi that where i will merge into the supreme brahman that is the last trap of maya propad mentions that many times the impersonal aspect of the mayavads where they are thinking that aham brahmasmi i don't have i have nirgun i have no form there nothing as a form everything is a pure unadulterated supreme brahman a sort of a light or an energy and i am a part of that energy and i'm going to merge into that energy that merging business is a big cheating also shrimad bhagavatam doesn't deal with that so please understand the different components of cheating first in order to go beyond we have to understand that if there is something that uh, we have to understand the fault first in, before we start correcting it if we don't see a fault we will never be able to correct it so that is one of the reasons why i'm getting more and more deeper into the subject matter to understand because a lot of people are um, who are in the, who are the so called transcendentalists and the big big names in, even in india like the like the different missions that are there uh, the great chinmaya nand swami and all that osho uh, what is his name they used to address him bhagwan rajneesh all these are cheaters i'm sorry to say that please don't feel offended because this is shrimad bhagavatam i'm speaking dharma projita kaitavatra this is it is rejecting all these kind of religions or propagations that will that will teach you to merge into some brahman or to annihilate your existence no existence cannot be annihilated they translated chinmayanand swami was supposed to be one of the top speakers of bhagavad gita and people read his bhagavad gita but they are all cheated they have never understood even the basics of those verses of of bhagavad gita krishna clearly says the to 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 arjun natam neme janadipa he is saying that all these kings that are there there's not that they never existed in the past it's not that they are existing now or they will cease to exist in the future so the existence of the of the soul is always there so where is the question of merging where is the question of of annihilating the soul or where is the question 
of the soul's existence of of ceasing to be but they manipulate the sanskrit language they manipulate and they present it in such a way so that their philosophy is is shooting the poor persons who are in poor fund of knowledge who have not understood sanskrit who have not heard sanskrit verses from the proper source as it is but this is very important some people may feel offended i please forgive me i don't mean to please trust me that i have gone through all these philosophies before i came to the gaudi vishnu philosophy trust me although i was born in a vishnu family in the pushti margi there was no preaching i felt it was all sentimental and i started reading different philosophies right from my childhood everybody used to sleep at night and in order so that i don't disturb anybody i used to sleep outside in the veranda and read in the public light that was that was on the street and i used to read books and different philosophies buddhism islam christianity about the different yogananda etc param rishi uh, paramhansa rishi uh, the, uh, the, all these different philosophies and then till i was not satisfied until i came across ac bhakti vidhan the swami shri prabhupad's books that satisfied all my questions and my queries from within i kept reading some of his books again and again to assimilate to digest and how wrong are we are just because most of the time we don't even understand our own sanatan dharma oh, why are you a hindu why are you a sanatan dharmi or because i was born like that what is the duty of a sanatan dharmi i don't know how many verses are in the bhagavad gita i don't know have you heard of shrimad bhagavatam i don't know is it the same as bhagavad gita have a conversation with this at least some of the muslims or most of the muslims they know their quran they know we as sanatan dharmis we don't even know what the vedas are how many vedas are there how many upanishads are there how many puranas are there because nobody bothers to teach us it becomes a sentimentalism and then it converts into fanaticism it's a combination of sentimentalism and fanaticism and people who have the poor fund of knowledge or who are manipulative in nature who have some scholarship in sanskrit language they are very good at adapting they are very good at at cheating the general public for their own sense gratification of either money making name and fame so this is we have to be very careful and i will keep on as much as the lord inspires me within my heart by the mercy of guru and gauranga try to highlight these things so that we don't get cheated that is why this first verse of shrimad bhagavatam is extremely important we getting those people who are in the, in, in in search of liberation moksha that is a big cheating liberation so that i can get bereft of all kind of problems is a big cheating but liberation when it comes automatically one can be liberated right now wherever you are wherever we are when we are situated in pure bhakti one doesn't have to enter into some brahma jyoti or into vaikuntha for liberation no liberation simply means the vaishnava has explained when we are beyond the three modes of material nature and that is possible but rishikina rishikesha sevanam tat bhakti uttaram when we engage each and every senses that we have each and every sense in the service of sri krishna in bhakti then whatever activity we do whether we are eating sleeping whatever we do it is it is in the in, with the conscious that is the prabhupad called it krishna consciousness nobody has used those words i have read books from different philosophers even they have not used a simple word as god consciousness this is so important krishna bhavna amrit the nectar of consciousness of krishna but whatever activity even i'm breathing i'm breathing so that you know this is because my dear krishna has given me this air i'm drinking water krishna has transformed himself in water raso aham apso kaunteya my whole existence is for krishna everything whether i'm going for a job whether i'm studying whatever i'm doing i'm obligated to do certain duties that are there but at the end of the day my whole goal is the lotus feet of krishna vasudeva paraveda vasudeva parayoga vasudeva parakriya vasudeva 
परम तप वासुदेव परागति वासुदेव परो धर्म श्रीमद भागवतम इवन इफ वन इज डूइंग ऑस्टेरिटीज वासुदेव परम तप वन इज डूइंग योगा वासुदेव परा योगा गोल ऑफ योगा इज वासुदेव पेनेंसेस द गोल इज वासुदेव वासुदेव परो धर्म अमंगस्ट ऑल द धर्म इज द अटेनमेंट ऑफ वासुदेव सर्व धर्मान परित्यज्य माम एकम शरणम व्रज अहम तम सर्व पापे व्यो मोक्ष श्यामि मासम सर्व धर्म परित्यज्य कृष्णस मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट श्लोक इन द भगवत गीता प्लीज give up all other varieties of religion and please only sir and mom ekam but to come to that stage one has to come to a pious platform so that it becomes a little easier but chaitanya mahaprabhu and our acharyas like shila prabhupada has made it so easy but we do not want to chant the holy name we do not want to follow the regulatory principles of freedom no meat eating no intoxication no illicit sex and no gambling no eating onion garlic no associating with with the uh, tamogun or the mode of ignorance but it's very hard no tea drinking no coffee drinking it's very hard so then how can we attain those th- those stages of paro dharma and shrimad bhagavatam as we take the blessings of shrimad bhagavatam we understand then our consciousness will be purified so therefore we have to be Uh, understand that and it is higher than impersonal literature the, the shrimad bhagavatam and it is higher than gyan kan people go into and they are they they debate on shastra philosophical like the sankracharyites uh, the the sankrites gyan kan of the vedas uh, and, and and the karma kan division where people are so attracted to the different karmas where they do the karma kan to pasna so that they get the material benefits etc it is higher than that shrimad bhagavatam higher than the upasana kan etc because it recommends the worship shrimad bhagavatam recommends the worship of of the supreme person of god shri krishna lord shri krishna and even beyond that there comes a stage in shrimad bhagavatam where krishna it doesn't matter if you are the supreme lord or not you are just the apple of my eye you are my lover you are my everything oh krishna huh and no and then there comes a time where you want to even forget that krishna is the supreme lord you spontaneous love of krishna known as rag bhakti bhakti is divided into two parts one is known as sadhana bhakti or vaidhi bhakti according to rules and regulations bhakti chanting the holy names and we have to follow so many rules and regulations tapasya etc but there comes a stage in our life when we go beyond all that known as rag bhakti bhakti in the footsteps of the rajwasis of golokwasis where it is spontaneous nobody has to tell us it is so spontaneous like breathing air it is so spontaneous like eating or drinking krishna bhakti or krishna prem takes that dimension and that is known as rag that should be our goal Hmm. if we don't attain rag bhakti then we can never attain a uh, goal of vrindavan we can possibly at the time of death remember the the, the uh, aspect or the avatars of krishna and be promoted to vaikuntha dham but not to goal of vrindavan this is important so shrimad bhagavatam is superior to all of these because it aims at the supreme from satyam param dhimahi we explain the meaning of satyam param dhimahi with six different darshans and the satyam param dhimahi means the ultimate the service of radha and krishna which is the ultimate truth which is the substance of the samam bonam of all categories and from shrimad bhagavatam one can know the substance as well as all the categories and that is why in chronological order vyasdev has first started diving into the different aspects of sri krishna about the different avatars of sri krishna and then he goes gradually into the 10th canto canto where the supreme personality of god at nand nandan yashoda nand his past times have been revealed so even one should not jump straight to the 10th canto ah very important unless we are discussing very special events like janmashtami or any special events 
that are uh, that are according to a particular festival otherwise one should be very very careful because people they want to jump into the pancha mahara sadhyay the five chapters of the 10th canto of the maharas etc it is forbidden but then shri prabhupad he had uh, was invited by the birlas very rich family pious family in india and most of the people have heard big industrialist and uh, they have been very pious they have built many temples all over india and they are famous for by the name geeta mandir the birlas have built geeta mandir temples in many many cities all over india many major cities big temples and they have donated a lot of money and one time when they went when, when, when prabhupad visited their home i think it was in delhi uh the family members of birla were gathered around shri prabhupad and prabhupad went with a few disciples and one of the family members requested prabhupad ji ki swami ji can you uh, uh speak something about the pancha maharasa adhyay of uh, uh, the bhagavatam so prabhupad with very folded hands humbly said uh you may be qualified to hear but i am not qualified to speak so it is the other way around so one should be very careful all these professional speakers sometimes they sit on this dais and they shed tears and they are speaking about shrimad bhagavatam and all these ladies and people who are sitting on this big sofas and they are all big industrialists who are donating big money to their katha and all that they get involved in this sentimental uh, without understanding who sri krishna is if we ask them to speak about sri krishna what they have heard for 7 days they cannot even say anything so it has just become more or less a pious event it has become a more or less an event even bhagavatam katha these days has become a fashion and 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 originally some of these speakers had a very good intent they came with good bhav they had the bhakti element but again maya is so strong slowly they forget things what was the main purpose of bhagavat katha and now they simply have this orchestras and they sing all these filmy tune uh composed by none of them most of these bhajans that they sing are not even composed by any well known acharya it has been composed by some filmy personality or personality who are materially motivated these are the songs that they sing and and people have get enter- entertainment that is called manoranjan lokaranjan it may be ear pleasing but it cannot be soul pleasing anything that is soul pleasing it, it and once one hears that with the proper attitude as it will be explained in this verse further in the last two lines then it will it will have a very profound effect uh, profound effect and, and and as so like this we have to understand that shrimad bhagavatam uh, one can understand, one can come to know the vastavam what was to the real substance wait vedyam means to know atra in this vastava vastu and that vastu is sri krishna nanda nanda radha krishna that is the original absolute truth satyam param dhimahi so like this in this verse um vyasadeva is saying that vedyam vastava atra vastu shivadam tapatre unmulanam it brings auspiciousness real auspiciousness not some temporary auspiciousness because most people consider auspicious as getting dhan getting money ha huh? like those aartis and explain those are cheating aartis om jay jagadish hare and then in that there is a lot of list of material things ghar dhana aave ye dhana aave ghoda gaadi bangla aave that's the essence what i'm trying to say is ha huh? so and then there is a part of some essence of bhakti but it is mixed mishra bhakti and that is cheating as far as bhagavatam is concerned we don't consider uh, those bhajans that people most of these artists that have been compiled they don't even think who has written those shiva kahe shri anand swami kahe brahmanand swami they are all mayavadis they are killer of krishna killer of god killer of the personality of god because they are mayavadis mayavadis do not believe in a form they are nirgun there is no form everything is brahman sarvam idam khalo brahman and i will merge into the brahman i am brahman i become he so aham i become that god i become that brahman this is important 
please understand this principles again and again this i i probably will be repeating this many times because prabhu pad ji in many purports of shrimad bhagavatam bhagavad gita wherever he has given his tika his commentaries he takes that opportunity to drive this point home that this is personalism see krishna is a person if an ordinary person we say see that person is walking on the street we say can you call that person or those persons they are not wearing mask they are irresponsible persons uh, every they are a person so man is made in the image of god even the christians believe in that so how come the sanatan dharmis those who go to this mayavad school they are killers they are offenders of krishna there is no form there is no form of god are baba you have a form one time i will tell you a very nice katha practically it happened there is one very nice sanyasi uh by the name of his holiness param pujaniya radha govind maharaj ji he lives in vrindavan dham and he is an amazing speaker of shrimad bhagavatam very very true to the quality of a of a sanyas sanyasi personality and a very much very good lover of shrimad bhagavatam he is not attracted to any name fame money and practically we have had the opportunity to serve him when he used to come to the west and we have seen his lifestyle personally and even any money that people gave him in donations he used to give back sometimes he even gave money to his poor disciples and he whenever he went to the poor villages in india they did not have any money at for uh, pending for for uh, for like 1000 2000 3000 5000 5, people used to come for katha and and this prasadam you know that is a part of the of our vedic system so maharaj used to give from his own pocket whatever people sometimes out of love they gave donations to maharaj when they did pranam but he never kept it he never kept anything for himself that we have practically seen even when he used to come to the west to these temples whatever money the disciples or people invited him to him home and he did katha people gave him an envelope with dollars or whatever he used to leave all that money in the temple all that money that he got in the local temple whichever town he was so exemplary person so one time maharaj he told this katha personally that he was in transit at one of the uh, uh, middle eastern airports perhaps it was dubai please don't hold me to that but the essence is important try to understand and his and his connecting flight probably to london got delayed and there was some issues there for the next flight so he was sitting at the airport for almost several hours and he had simply was he had his bag with him he is, has his saffron clothing and his, his hand is in his japa bag and he is chanting the mahamantra hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare and he's constantly you know after a few rounds he was looking at the time on the display uh, to just to check the time because it, it was understood that his flight was going to be delayed by 8 hours so then uh, after sitting there for several hours uh, of uh, not getting up and he was simply chanting and it happened to be ekadashi day by the way so one of the arab commander in chief of that airport security chief happened to observe him because he was sitting perhaps within eyesight of his cabin where the security was and he was sitting in the lounge uh, by the gates so he went outside and he was in plain clothes and he was wearing the natural arabian thobe and he approached him and he says uh, uh come here please come here he said he kind of you know made a and and he asked him to follow him in his cabin so maharaj in his very nice hindi he says hi hi krishna ab ye kya musibat aa gayi oh krishna i don't know what is going to happen uh so he understood that this must be a big commanding officer or somebody so he said please sit he, because the communication was mainly through a broken english that guy was an arab arabic speaking person and maharaj's english was not as perfect because he was a hindi speaking katha kathakar 
he hardly spoke english uh, we have had the good fortune when he was in chicago to translate his lectures from hindi to english when he was speaking in open sunday feast lectures uh, but anyways so uh, maharaj then he says what is he said eshada what is this in your in, in, in the bag so maharaj pulled out his bead bag is is beads actually showing the beads and the muslim officer he also pulled out something from his pocket a small circle of of uh, some uh, crystal beads so he said you are taking name of god allah so maharaj said yes yes so oh even i am taking this is my tasbih i am taking the name of god allah so maharaj said yeah uh, he smiled then as they were just about to start a real conversation uh at the airports in 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 the middle east uh, they uh, during the 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 namaz uh, they openly broadcast the namaz uh, what what they call is the uh, what do you call the salah or the the ilan on the speakers and uh, who are, who are those who are muslims which are the majority wherever they are whether in a lounge or even the security persons we have seen it with our eyes they pull out their mats and they start uh, doing their their namaz their, their, they start reading their prayers right there and there wherever the security guards even when you are passing through security comes for close at least back in the 80s i remember because i used to be in dubai i, I was working for an american company for about a year in in in, in saudi and dubai in 85 and 86 before coming to united states so i i used to remember even on the streets of dubai when the police was uh, you know they had those little machine guns with them and i've seen with my own eyes that when the when the when the uh, streets the mo- the mosques were on the speakers when the prayer started they would pull out their mat from their cars and right on the sidewalk they would put their machine gun on the side and they start bowing down and and start up saying their prayers it was an amazing sight you know sometimes that thought came that what if a criminal came and picked up that machine gun and just shot them but i don't think anybody would really think of doing the those things in the arabian countries they were pretty much strict about their cruelty also um, honestly speaking you know uh, <laughs> we have seen beheadings with our own eyes you know i had a friend one mr todd waldron an american fellow from colorado he was my co-worker and one day we saw in saudi arabia we had heard that they cut hands for stealing and uh, for doing heinous crimes they actually cut the head and and i i once after the friday namaz after the friday prayers so we said okay let's go to the big mosque in jeddah so we saw it with our own eyes you know and then i could not probably eat even for two days and even todd the, this american fellow he was completely aghast like you know the way they they these people are, are conducting their affairs so obviously nobody would steal the gun or anything nobody would that is why it is true that nobody locks their uh, their uh, stores or offices during the afternoon time sometimes you know they have a siesta time they close for 2 3 hours so they sometimes they just put curtains and they leave their and they even go to sleep in the back rooms so they don't fear uh theft because theft is a very very eye for an eye the sharia law it's called anyways coming back to maharaj ji's story so he he when that alarm started the the announcement of the the prayers that that officer pulled out a mat from his drawer and he went on the floor and started saying his prayers so after finishing his prayers after 10 minutes he he, he told maharaj that give me 10 minutes he said like that and then he said his prayers and after finishing the prayers he went back to his chair and he started his conversation with maharaj please try to understand there is a theme behind this this particular story that i am telling you all he said that uh, are coming back that you are hindu um, molvi you are a hindu uh, teacher so he said yes yes i am a hindu priest oh okay okay so he is saying that you know when you are praying does you know your god uh, listen to you uh, so he said yes of course so uh, the question was that mara said that what what are you doing right now so the arabian security officer said that i was praying but he, then in the conversation the part came where uh i asked 
nobody has seen allah so how do you you know the hindus you all are saying that allah has a form you know like we see in the hindu movies the arabs were very very much attracted to the bollywood even today if you go to dubai and other places there are actually indian bollywood uh, dvd stores and all these uh, internet based stream uh, streaming uh, that that they actually put the what you call the subtitles in arabic so they see all this the arabs that the the hindus are used to idol worship they call it idol worship so in islam we don't have all that nobody has seen allah allah is so pure and this and that and that so then maharaj said that what did you do right now i was praying so does allah listen to your prayers so he said yeah of course he listens so then um, if you pray with a good heart he listens so maharaj said then how does allah listen so he got irritated how do you listen so maharaj said he was a little now shaken up because he got upset that officer well i listen with my ears so allah also has is listening with his ears so then maharaj ji said that if allah has ears that allah has a nose allah has eyes i allah can see everything right he says yes of course what kind of a question is that so maharaj said that means if allah has ears allah has eyes allah has a nose allah has a face that means allah is a person so like that he proved it to him in his conversation and then maharaj started looking at the clock on the wall again and again you know because he sat in his cabin for some time and then that officer was really amazed at the conversation and then he said you are a big priest molvi and you don't have a watch because you know there the molvis are big the, you know the imams in in the mosques and and they are followed by so many servants or whatever you call their 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 uh, associates and they come in big cars and everything the molvis they are not ordinary people they are respected even by the sheikhs so they are very in they are very opulent in one sense those molvis although they may sport a nice beard but they they have got nice golden watches and everything grado or rolex watches so he said mara said no i don't have a watch so then he said okay just wait you know give me and then he walked out of the cabin he went to a duty free shop with his own money he purchased a nice watch for maharaj and gave it to maharaj as a gift please take it maharaj said no 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 i don't need it he said no you must you are my guest and i'm very happy to have a conversation with you and like that even a mayawad muslims are a mayawad basically they don't believe in form it's 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 that's why they are offenders in one sense because uh, in their mosque you cannot even have a picture there is no dds they are pure mayawad so what is the difference between that school of thought and they are saying that okay in the beginning you need pancho upasana they worship ganesh ji they worship durga ji they worship shiv ji they worship lord narayana and they worship surya dev but that is the most basic worship and once you go beyond that you graduate from there then you will realize that i am he i am god then you don't need the aid of all these murti that murti puja will stop and you will become one with brahman that is a mayavad that is a brahmavad and again and again for those who have heard me please try to understand this is what india or bharatvarsh or the sanatan dharma is divided into there are two schools of thought personalism and impersonalism impersonalism is mayavad so shrimad bhagavatam does not agree with that that is why none of the mayavads Are, are are ready to read shrimad bhagavatam they are not they do not they read the vedas where they can misinterpret the language in such a way so that it fits their needs of mayavadism or impersonalism so dharma projit kaita vatra parmo nirmat saranam satam vedyam vastavam vedyam vedyam vastava vatra shivadam tapatre unmulana uh, once we come to this pure bhakti platform all this different tapas adhyatmik adibhotik and adidevi kleshas that that keep bringing us into this material world miseries that are that are inflicted on the body by the self miseries that are inflicted by others and miseries and catastrophes that are inflicted by devi devtas or natural catastrophes uh, no matter if, even if they come for the realized soul it doesn't matter to them because they are not on a bodily concept 
they've gone beyond the bodily concept realize that they are a spirit soul so no matter what calamities come it doesn't matter to them and that is what shrimad bhagavatam brings us on that platform when we serve shrimad bhagavatam sincerely and when we hear it tapotrai unmulana it uproots these three tapas or miseries from the root hmm. so this is very important i know last time we ended up here and i will even stop right now because again the revision and as the as the points keep pouring in i will uh, repeat certain things again and again just to fortify our understanding of the first verse of the shrimad bhagavatam or rather the 2.1.1.2 uh, chronologically second verse but a very very important verse i think probably it will going to take a two or three more sessions before i can finish this verse based on the uh, the depthness and based on my understanding so i hope sila prabhupad and our acharya is pleased i hope the vaishna was listening here are 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 grasping the 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 uh, the essence of the message that is being uh, that is being shared here uh, all glory to sri prabhupad grantraj shrimad bhagavatam ki jai hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare 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 krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare